If you've watched anime for long enough, you know that in every story, there's a character who breaks the mold and steps outside the limits of what we thought was possible in the world. In Jujutsu Kaisen, you have the unstoppable and untouchable Satoru Gojo, whose mere presence was enough to change the hierarchy of Jujutsu sorcery single-handedly. In Hunter x Hunter, you have the Ant King Meruem, who essentially speed ran the Nen learning curve and dismembered the entire verse only after being alive for 40 freaking days. It feels like an anime cliche that a godlike figure in the story is tasked with a monumental role of changing the world around them in a huge way and are defined by their strength alone. Even though this is something we commonly brush off and take for granted, Demon Slayer takes a different path when we realize that its overpowered badass Yorichi does not fit this criteria in any way, and I absolutely love it. So join me as we look at a character who, while undoubtedly one of the most blessed in the series, isn't defined by his triumphs, but rather his failures. As a quick disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this video, so as a warning, please proceed with caution. With that out of the way, this is a deep dive into the first sun breather himself, Yorichi Sugikuni. Demon Slayer was really quite unpredictable and played its hand quickly when revealing its true intentions as a series and the characters it would later go on to present. Early on, it seems as if Tanjiro is a normal shonen protagonist, eager to get stronger for his sister Nezuko and seeking justice for the death of his family. You know, typical shonen motivation stuff. But this is quickly dismissed when you realize what a kind, compassionate, and humble character he is truly down to his very core. If you're more curious about this and want to explore Tanjiro's character below surface level, I'll I'll leave a link in the description taking you to a Tanjiro video where I talk about this exact topic. The point being that Tanjiro is not a normal shonen protagonist and Demon Slayer is something that cannot be compared to its predecessors. And as I'm sure you're all aware of where I'm going with this, the same couldn't be more true than the pinnacle of strength in the series, Yorichi. From birth, he was blessed with unparalleled strength, an indomitable will, and a soul so full of love and kindness that you wouldn't be aware of how strong he was unless he had shown you himself. Normally, to reach the the best in shonen anime, a character basically has rings that he or she has to jump through and naturally while going through this process, surpass their mentors, comrades, and basically everybody around them. Be it a hero test, ninja exam, or any other rite of passage, these tests, if you will, contribute greatly to the status that one receives at the end of the series as the strongest, basically documenting their trials and tribulations and showing how far they've truly come. Yorichi does not fit into the main stigma seen by so many shonen characters before him. Because of our genre expectations, we're led to believe that Yorichi was this indomitable force, hardened through countless brutal experiences and grueling training, and he was never the character that I assumed he was when first being introduced to him. The true revelation is finally revealed when we're introduced to Yorichi during chapter 177, titled Younger Brother. As soon as Yorichi picks up a sword, it's like a switch was flipped and swordsmanship was something that came so incredibly natural to him. Effortlessly, he began performing breathing techniques to increase the strength of his attacks, revealed that he could view into the see-through world and possess strength through his Demon Slayer mark that any swordsman would die for. With that being said, I think it's vital to understand the world that all the characters of Demon Slayer live in. This world, common to many shonen, is known as a fight world. This is described as a world where its members are raised with the notion that power is everything in the verse and hard, diligent training will allow you to unlock your hidden potential and achieve dreams that you never thought were possible. In contrast to these fight worlds, Demon Slayer doesn't fall within this classification. Demon Slayers by and large are purely the minority of people who from traumatized backgrounds train day in and day out to protect the everyday humans around them. They are rarely there for merit, status, or a reward of any kind. Demon Slayer understands that those who fight demons are absolute maniacs given the strength difference between a normal demon and a human, but Yorichi really isn't one of those. 
Assessing Yorichi's character, I compare him to a force of nature or something akin to a plant, just serving his greater purpose in the world. It requires you to back away from your preconceived notions of the shonen genre and view him for what he truly is. Despite his godly levels of power, he slices down demons with no expression whatsoever and claims that he's nobody special. There will eventually be a time when someone else will come along and surpass his skills in the future. But from the start, there was this air to Yorichi that he would play a prominent role in the story and would achieve great success in all that he set out to do. But sadly, I didn't think this was the case. I think his true impact lies in his actions after he's passed away, and I'll explain. The whole point of his character isn't to be the person who comes in and takes care of everything when the situation gets dire. It's to communicate the various aspects of Demon Slayer's story through his many shortcomings. In his battle against a prime Muzan, Yorichi states that he believes that he was put on this earth for the purpose of killing this demon. Despite this, he's unable to do what he believes he was born to do and lets a being of unparalleled evil get away. When confronting his brother after he was tragically turned into a demon, he cries, offering his sympathies. In a way, he feels guilty being so powerful that his brother had to stoop low enough to become one with demon kind to try and match him in combat. And he lost his wife and children to a demon attack, unable to keep them safe with his godly levels of strength. At a glance, Yorichi seems like a character who was given so much but accomplished so little, when in actuality his failures tell a greater tale of success to come. Throughout the many failures in his life, he acts as a teacher figure, guiding those in the future to achieve what he alone couldn't. Muzan had split himself into countless pieces during his individual battle with Yorichi, just a single man looking to take down the Demon King. Even though he's the strongest being we have ever seen, this was not enough to completely eliminate Demon Kind and Muzan was able to successfully escape. Contrast this to the end of the story where all of the Demon Slayers band together to defeat Muzan. The notion of an individual is Yorichi's biggest lesson he teaches others, but paradoxically is the source of his major character downfalls. From training Demon Slayer's breathing techniques, sparing Tamayo because he sees the good in her, cultivating friendships, and passing down his teachings to Sumiyoshi, Yorichi puts more stock into his relationships with others rather than his individual strength alone. Even from the grave, Yorichi led the Demon Slayers to victory over Muzan through the various scars on his body that never truly went away as Muzan became weaker. The amazing thing about this overpowered character is that he isn't defined by his strength alone and doesn't want to be. Yorichi would be fine living a peaceful life free from any violence or conflict, but also feels like since he was gifted with such amazing swordsmanship skills, believes that he has so much to give to the world. His kindness speaks a hundred times louder than his strength ever could. What are your thoughts on Yorichi as a character? Did you find him boring like some people, or do you like how he was portrayed throughout the story of Demon Slayer? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more anime analysis content injected straight into your YouTube feed. With that, I'll see you guys in the next one. It's been Dill from Anime Analysis, and until next time, stay curious, anime fam. Peace.